to District Divided, a DC sports podcast, more specifically a Washington Commanders podcast. I am Amit. That is KDOT. Today's episode, normally record a little bit later in the week, recording on a Wednesday. So if you end up hearing things, because this will release at Friday, 2 p.m. as it always does, if you end up hearing some things that happen uh, later on in the week and you're like, why didn't they talk about it? That's why. So just a heads up there. Uh, but what we are talking about today, Magic Johnson was on the Today Show and he did confirm that the bid is in and that he wants a Super Bowl ring and he's won in all the other sports. So we're going to talk about Magic and his appearance on the Today Show. Uh, and then we obviously have to talk about what was the most electric event of the year so far. LSU women's basketball beating Iowa. Um and a few things happened. So we'll talk about Angel Reese. We'll talk about Caitlin Clark. We'll talk about Dr. Jill Biden, first lady. Um, <laughs> I mean, the whole thing was crazy, k Um, And then we are, of course, going to talk about one mock draft, specifically now that we're getting into draft season. Daniel Jeremiah published a mock draft recently. Um, so we're going to go ahead and talk about who he has the commanders taking. Then we get to the comment mailbag, as we always do after the pod. But we always begin with k How are you doing today? I'm doing well. I do want to thank you for record, allowing us to record here on Wednesday since the rest of my week is all kind of fucking busy. Um, yeah, doing good. Doing good. As much as I disagree with almost every fucking mock draft I'm looking at, I'm, I'm, I'm good together. Hey, and by the way, in a new setup as well, you're holding the microphone today. You're sounding a lot clearer. What is holding that? Uh, well, you know, I do a multitude of other podcasts and uh, one of the podcasts we do uh, all sorts of sports. We've been trying to do an in-person pod um, mm -hmm. like once a month. Uh, I showed up to do it a couple weeks ago and realized we had none of the right equipment. So then after I dropped 200 something dollars on some new equipment so that we can make it work, I'm going to use the shit out of it, <laughs> even though holding the microphone is clearly not as easy as having it right here. But until I get a stand or something, I'm going to let this three or four hundred dollar microphone and this how many fucking hundred dollar device do, do, do the thing. <laughs> Plus, I can do things with it, you know, like hang it from the top, like do like my announcing bit like, oh, oh that's true you can do that okay so there, there's a lot of a lot of creativity around this microphone and this setup right here i'll do my best yeah. not to rile you up because i know that will go halfway across the room and you'll be out three four hundred bucks so i'm gonna that make sure would that. suck but i will say if we end up getting that a uh, flashlight or anything it can also be used as a uh oh right or sponsorship right of course anyway why don't we go ahead and uh jump into magic johnson jump into the josh harris bid uh, once again, this was on the Today Show quite recently, where Magic Johnson he was talking about March Madness and how the tournament was, stuff like that. And then they, of course, asked him point blank, hey, have you bid for the commander? Are you buying the commanders? Uh, to which he laughed. And then he did actually answer the question. And he said, yes, we have, in fact, placed our bid. And it is now up to Mr. Snyder. Um, we would have said yacht bitch, of course. And he does say that, hey, I've got a ring in every single sport that I have taken part in. So as a basketball player, of course, he's won it. Uh, LA Sparks have won it. I believe he has a Seattle franchise. I want to say I can't remember where all his where all his handprints are at this point. But he has won <laughs> in the all the different sports Dodgers, the Dodgers, and yes, the Sparks and the, Was it the Kings. Maybe it's the LA Kings. I don't think he has a hockey team, but um. I, uh, the whatever the L.A. soccer team is. Oh, that's right. L.A.F.C. Yeah. yeah. Who just won um, and added more to Philadelphia uh, misery, which is always a good time. But anyways, uh, K-Dot, what did you make of him coming out publicly and saying, yeah, the bid is in and we are at this point waiting for Mr. Snyder to see if he accepts the bid? Shout out to Al Roker, uh, weatherman extraordinaire, but also a dude that I'm sure is friends with Magic Johnson because Magic Johnson is fucking friends with everybody. And knowing that you can get that motherfucker to talk about anything you want him to talk about if you just know how to push the right buttons. It's Magic. He loves doing this shit, right? But it was, it was, I guess it was nice to hear as a, as a Commanders fan that like, all right, we, we've talked about comparing the different guys and the different bids between the Harris group, uh, Steve Baklava, um, and, 
uh, like and, and and Jeff Bezos potentially swooping in to do whatever it is he's going to do if he if he ever gets around to that. But um, it looks as though the Josh Harris team is putting together a really, really good winning group. And that feels good. Like we knew that Magic Johnson was attached to it, but him feeling comfortable enough to actually say something about it. Again, the fans kind of thinking about it. I think that while I don't think Dan Snyder will ever be persuaded by anything public pressure wise, I would say that if you do get to a point where Jeff Bezos is not swooping in and you have a basically a very, very small bidding war between Steve uh, Spanakopita and fucking um, and, and Josh Harris, maybe the idea of just the pedigree behind the guys there as far as Josh Harris maybe sways it in one direction compared to the other. I don't know. I don't know why that would necessarily play in a factor, but it does make me excited. I mean, Magic is right. He's had success in everything that he's touched. As long as he's not too hands on, uh, the mm-hmm. Lakers will, will will cop to that as far as what happened in the 2000s. But um, yeah, it's just it's it's cool to see. I mean, I, you have a guy you you have guys that you always know there's going to be an adult in the room telling the ownership group or knowing how it is you need to build something successful. Right. And that that to me is huge. And it sways it even further in the direction of when we were comparing the product on the field with the Harris group, I think speaks right. to more of a proven track record. It makes me excited about it. And, and so that's exactly the point, I think, Kate. And if uh, if I'm the NFL owner, I would probably prefer this Josh Harris group uh, in because these guys know sports. They understand right. the dealings of it. Uh, they're working with yet another commissioner. That's fine. They, they will know the know-how and how these things work. Uh, Jeff Bezos would completely shake everything up. It would be great for them to say they're pals with him, uh, but it's different. And Jeff Bezos, uh, at least relative to the other owners and how they make money, as far as I'm concerned, he makes so much more, so much like it's so fast, right? The rate of return for him is so quick that I don't know how that is going to like what he's going to do as an owner. And I don't think they know either. So that's, that's an interesting one. Now Gasparino put it on another tweet, uh, Snyder's mouthpiece uh, saying, Hey, he's open to a Bezos bid. I think he's basically begging for it because he knows that Bezos can up the price for him. Yeah. Um, And then, yeah, I mean, I want this Josh Harris group uh, to take over. I think it'd be good for us too, because I think they would know how to win. Uh, Magic Johnson is saying that he's got a ring in every sport that he's been a part of how can that not excite you, right? Like he wants a Super Bowl ring, talked about it, uh, and how important it is to him. Uh, now, my follow-up question, k is how long do you think it would take you to learn the name Steve Apostolopoulos if he ends up becoming our owner? Steve Jarrah? Um, yeah. Never. I like, uh, so... It just won't just, happen. A uh, little into me is like, I, my favorite cuisine is Greek food. Mediterranean, um, Mediterranean as a whole, but Mediterranean can, uh, I'll get, I could get, I could get really deep into this. Steve but, Hero. Steve Hero. Yeah. I, I say, here's actually the thing. kind of a I've cool said, name as well. If we end up winning a Super Bowl, he could be Steve Hero. Here's the thing. I've been saying Steve Gyro just because I don't think that if I pronounce it the correct way on the podcast, most of our fans would know what the fuck it is I was talking about. Fair enough. Um, no, this is a much better bit. So we just go, <laughs> yep, of course. Yeah. We know who you're talking about. <laughs> Yeah, as somebody who after school almost every day went to shout out Parthenon restaurant and uh, Chevy Chase, um, I was there dropping $20 like three, four times a fucking week for my gyro and fries. That's my shit. I think I've had more euros than any other human being in my age bracket. Well, I, I think the point of that comment there is just in case you guys are wondering, this is very much a local sports podcast. I mean, he's a Chevy Chase. I grew up in Georgetown area. We got Palisades covered. We got, we got every place here covered. I'm waterfront right now. I mean, like. We are covered. Um, but overall, Magic Johnson admits the bid is out, and it does really feel like we're in the final stages here where Yapic has to decide who he's selling this to, and hopefully these other owners are... You said that he won't give in to public pressure, but hopefully there's enough of influence there in that realm that a sale does get pushed through sooner rather than later. So I thought it was a sales update in that one of the potential new owners did speak out and say, yeah, we are waiting. That's where we're at now. I don't, I doubt there'll be any public pressure from that aspect of it. I still think the, the, the idea from the the, ownership aspect of it, you're saying even from the ownership aspect, I think the, the, the only thing right now that hangs is a, uh, is a dagger over the head of Dan Snyder in this entire thing is when is the Mary Jo White investigation? Oh, that's, that's a good point. I have a question for you. So if you had to rank the following things happening, First to last, uh-huh. how would you rank them? Three things. 
Lamar's situation being resolved, whether that's him staying in Baltimore or getting traded or holding out. And that's official Aaron Rodgers to the jets or something else. His situation gets resolved. Dan Snyder sells the team. Rank him in what order I think that happened in. Yeah. Chronologically. Uh, chronologically. I I'll go Rogers. Okay. Snyder Jackson. I think I am on the same page as you. I think the Rogers thing gets done before the draft so they can figure out what draft picks they have. Um, mm-hmm. I think Snyder happens after that. And this Lamar thing looks like it's going to drag for a while. There's no rush on it. Like that, nothing, nothing changes. And I think what you're seeing as far as the entire league collusion, not whatever it is you want to call it, the, the league right now, everyone has dug their toes and saying, we're not going to do anything to give them compensation for this draft right here. Yeah. Um, there's no language in any contract or any says that he says it needs to get done right now. Mm-hmm. But after the draft is over and everybody kind of slots of what quarterbacks they have, then I think that you might see some teams open up the doors to potentially say, all right, well, we don't give a fuck. Let's I mean, it, it, we, we could open ours up too, right? Like the enemy finally gets a look at how it goes. You know what? This guy mm-hmm. is not it. Like I've seen what right. it looks like. This isn't even close. Let's say, I mean, we're, we're hoping Sam Howell works out, but let's say he sees that. Well, now all of a sudden the door maybe is open to Lamar. So like there, that could happen with a bunch of teams, uh, right. but it's, I think it's going to be a bit, uh, I agree with you. Do you want to move on to the uh, women's college basketball championship? And yep. uh, the, either that or the mock draft stuff, if you want to keep it commanders and then roll off or what, what do you think? Why don't we do that? Why don't we do that? Why don't we stick to the mock draft that got dropped recently by Daniel Jeremiah? Uh, okay. Of course, the commanders are picking 16 uh, and he has us taking a tight end. I've talked a little more about than KDOT has Dalton Kincaid, who's becoming known as the best pass catching tight end in this class. And if you look at the ones that ultimately end up getting paid these days, it yeah. does seem to be those uh, that are pass catchers. Travis Kelsey, of course, comes to mind immediately. George Kittle is up there. Mark Andrews is up there. Uh, Dallas Goddard is next up if he hasn't gotten it already. So like the, it's these types of guys that are getting paid. The blocking is a little less sexy these days. And if you can get a tight end, that is a walking mismatch every single play. That's what you want. So 16 overall, that was the pick uh, made by Daniel Jeremiah for our Washington commanders, Dalton Kittle. Kincaid, excuse me, tied in out of Utah. Um, and then one other quick note, which is that we did have a top 30 visit with Hendon Hooker, quarterback from Tennessee. I don't know if that's gamesmanship to say, hey, we're looking at QB. And if one of them is available, trade up and we move back and we end up getting more picks again. Or if we're seriously looking at that. Curious about that. But let's let's stick to the mock draft for a moment and then you can give your hooker thoughts there. Um What'd you make of it? What did you think of the pick? I don't, I like it. I don't love it. Like it, the thing is that like the Dalton Kincaid stuff is um, you guys have heard what it is. I've had to say, as far as me thinking tight end would be an amazing position to go get for Washington with what it is that they need on offense. Right. Um, I understand the thought process for some people on the team that think that Logan Thomas coming back and healthy will be just enough. Cause I mean, if you look at Logan Thomas two years ago, he looked like just the wonderfully above average uh, tight end that you would not have any complaints about having on your team. Um, and then you also look at some of the young guys, they have like the Cole Turners, and I know I love Rodgers last year as far as the speed and stuff. Um, but Dalton Kincaid to me, as far as um, while he is a matchup nightmare, and I would love mm-hmm. that aspect of it, I just look and say that if you're not going to bring a tight end that's more complete to help out in, pa- in the pass rush or mm-hmm. to help out in the running game, then I think you might be going a bet too far. Unless it's this just a, a guy from a playmaker standpoint that they absolutely adore, right? So sure. like, I will always have Michael uh, Michael Mayer over mm-hmm. Dalton Kincaid because I think he is a more complete tight end. I think that he he is a great pass catcher, just not at that elite level that you see from Dalton Kincaid. Um, and I want somebody that – my thing is I don't necessarily want anybody on offense if they can't multitask. Or at least be a Swiss Army knife. You want you want to stick with the versatility that this coaching staff has been sticking with up until this point. Yeah, right. It matters a ton to me, and I understand if you want to get somebody and they can do something really special. But then if I look at that, like Logan Thomas, what do you think about him as far as when it comes to blocking? 
made it. <laughs> I'm not I'm not particularly thrilled with it. Thank you. So like hey, the <laughs> idea that you want to add a, a second tight end to this tight end group where you either have to choose between having someone that can't catch the fucking ball or someone who can't or someone who or someone that can't catch the fucking ball but they can block or somebody can block but can't catch the fucking ball. Right. I need somebody that's more complete with that. And if I look at the, what I consider to be the best built team in the NFL right now, which is the San Francisco 49ers. Mm-hmm. You look at George Kittle and saying he's the best overall tight end when it comes to doing both. Yeah. Okay. And I'd like to replicate that. Yeah, I think that's a very compelling argument. And once again, I'm going to uh, double down on what I said. I believe it was in the last episode, which is that I don't want to take a tight end in the first right. round straight up just because I think your return on investment is not there, at least historically speaking. If it works out, fantastic. I just don't have the faith that it will. Uh, what I would prefer to do in that same mock draft by Daniel Jeremiah, pick 22, Joey Porter Jr., corner out of Penn State. Uh, I would say we hit a home run with our last Penn State pick. And I would also say corner is a position of need. And this guy's highly touted. So if that's the situation and how it plays out and you guys can have a look at that mock draft, I would take Joey Porter Jr. I still prefer an offensive lineman because we have spent so much draft capital on the defensive side. Uh, Jack Del Rio knows the guys that are already in there and he's got some continuity already. Let's help the offense out. Let's help the enemy out. Let's help Sam Howell out. We need to put up points to do that. He needs to be able to be standing upright, get the time to make those throws. Uh, So that's what I would do. O-line, then corner. I mean, tight end's just not on my radar. So I see it. I get it. Like people want to mock him. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing I, it. I, I don't disagree. I mean, the 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 cornerback is uh, probably if you were to look or scour the entire internet, mm-hmm. cornerback is who they usually have paired up with Washington. If it's not Joey Porter, then it's Deontay Banks out of fucking Maryland, Maryland or yep. Devin Witherspoon out of Illinois or Christian Gonzalez out of Oregon. Looks like he, he looks like Witherspoon's long. I mean, he's starting yeah. to shoot up. Uh, we'll ha- we'll have Ben Robinson on grinding the mocks author, and he's got that breakdown again, uh, mm-hmm. as we always do. So we'll see what his uh, what his data is saying as well. That'll be useful. And then, of course, Darnell Wright, the uh, mm-hmm. tackle from Tennessee, is another one that keeps getting thrown around. But I I'll tell you that my two t- outside of Michael Meyer, the other one that I understand might be a tough pill to swallow for some fans. But I guess I'm on I'm going with the unpopular picks as far as this because. Is I have one A in Michael Meyer, but if he's there, my one B is Bajan Robinson. And the more mm-hmm. and more that I think about Robinson, the more and more I think it makes sense. The more and more I'm feeling as though when you're hearing what it is Ron Rivera is saying about what influence Eric Bianima might have in this draft, mm-hmm. um, the more and more I'm seeing that we need a home run chart. We need a home run hitter at the running back position. I think it would help out a ton for Sam Howell. Now I'm particularly curious. So I would agree that having a running back that is supposed to be the best in quite some time in, in a draft uh, come to Washington, that would obviously be exciting. Uh, now what I would say is return on investment for these running backs also has been fading recently. Uh, paying running backs seems to be a fading proposition recently. Uh, you look at Austin Eckler holding out right now, and it doesn't look like a long-term deal is anywhere close to occurring. Uh, but the question I have is, is this a situation where the talent is so great that even if we can't block that well right now, you still take him, and then you really focus on that offensive line moving yes. forward in future draft? Okay. Okay, I was just so curious about that. Th- th- I'm high on Robinson. And yes. the thing is, that, like, hard not to be. You see, you see his highlights. By the way, if anyone's seen insane. his highlights, holy shit! Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Um, Robinson to me is a guy that makes stuff happen when there's not stuff when there's not daylight, which is something our running backs struggle with. So there's like to Most make the true. play when the, to make the player get to the second level when the blocking isn't perfect. What do you do? So like the 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 idea right now that you have an Antonio Gibson and a Rob and a Brian Robinson, who I love both of these guys, right? Mm-hmm. Neither one of them to me are a threat to ever take the ball sixty five yards to the house. It just doesn't feel that way. Um, the, Gibby the, maybe. Who, 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 Gibby? Yeah. He's yeah, quick. He, I mean, he's fast. If, it's just here's the, the vision if, isn't as good as. Here, yeah, th- that's my point. Gibby tries to get the 65 yarder every fucking time and doesn't realize you got to kind of take what the defense is giving you at first and then get what you need to do at that second and third level to make that to, to get to get going. Right. right. Um, he doesn't do that. He looks he gets too greedy immediately and then it goes to shit. So 
Like that that's what I like I look at that and I say that is a pure fucking playmaker that you can hand the rock off to even with an offensive line that's not doing the best work. And you're right as far as the uh, the return on investment from a financial standpoint, right? You see mm-hmm. Austin Eckler, if you look at the numbers of Austin Eckler and what he was able to produce there for the Chargers, it feels like a crime that's true that he's not getting that is a good paid, point right? and Brees hall last year he slipped to the second but if someone took him in the first you're not complaining i mean he did tear his acl of course but up until that point up until that point uh, and, like he incredible. was going to be the reason they made the playoffs so yes. like the 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 idea so, to point me taken right so the the idea is if you have a guy that you love at running back in a in a in a atmosphere where you don't want to pay running mm-hmm. backs then what do you do you draft them yeah, you get th- you get three four years of production but with the first. I, but again, this if you this love is a situation him, if you where, love right, him, this if is a situation also right. where his his talent is ridiculous. And that's the thing. You like look at the last ten years of running backs, right? We've seen we've seen that they've become the least sexiest fucking position maybe in the NFL yes. compared to what it is we've seen growing up. But you look at does anyone think that the Giants made a mistake when Saquon Barkley was coming out of P- PSU? Or would, would anyone uh, draft him? Higher? I will. I will say those that are really into the analytics do believe so. Yes. Uh, well, I, I don't think uh, so. I don't think. I think but, those are fucking idiots. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm an analyst too, just to be clear. But not, you know, I would still Saquon Saquon man. I mean, holy cow. Yeah, I would I just, say the Giants failed him. Not that right. he being picked by the Giants. It's his fault. Dude, and I think free. also in the in the league yeah. that we have right now, where you don't necessarily have other than a few teams, you want that running back committee, right? Mm-hmm. The idea that you could have um, three guys with different skill sets and one of them being the playmaker that that helps out. I mean, think just think back. That helps the quarterback. Yeah, of course, of course. But uh, so does an offensive line. Uh, so I wouldn't be. You know what? I think you've sort of in this conversation swayed me a little more to John Robinson being a possibility. If we were to take him, would not be upset. That's where I'm at. I, I just, yeah. But if I had to, like, just from a long-term thinking standpoint, bolster that offensive line, right. make sure it could protect. Um, so, yeah. I think, that's, I, I that's think we're at. also, I think that the team, I think we're, I think as fans, we might be in disagreement about this. But mm-hmm. I do believe that the team thinks very highly of the moves they've made on the offensive line this offseason so far. I think they think that way of their moves all the time, every That's single right. offseason. And, but <laughs> look, know, I would out, hope they out, think that way. But outside of last year, they've been pretty right about the offensive line. That is true. And last year, of course, even when we were talking about Carson Wentz, we're starting to digress a little bit. But like even when we were talking about Carson Wentz, you know, initially we were frustrated because we were eating the entire salary cap. We're giving up a second round right. pick, maybe even another one. But then we go, well, we have good weapons. We have a good offensive line. That's what was exciting us. And then the offensive line just didn't pan out the way it normally does. Yeah. I mean, just something unlucky about Carson Wentz. Unfortunately, I don't know what it is, but I don't know how else to describe it. It was basically the same line. I mean, we lost Sheriff, but like the, should it have been that significant? Uh, anyway, um, let's talk about women's college basketball. Let's talk yes. about uh, Baltimore native Angel Reese and her LSU Tigers beating. Um, I will say the darling of the tournament because the Iowa Hawkeyes led by Caitlin Clark, who ratings magnet. I mean, if people tuned into the Iowa South Carolina game, South Carolina is 36 and 0 and Caitlin Clark put on a show. Amazing performance. South Carolina's first loss. Then they go against LSU, and I think a lot of people tuned in thinking I was just going to smoke them. Not the case. LSU hung up 102 points in a, I don't know if you saw the game, kid, or at least heard some of this stuff. The officiating was not good. Um, but at the end of the game, once it was quite settled that LSU won, Angel Reese hits... Uh, it's Caitlin Clark with a bit of a you, you can't see me. Can't see me. Points at the da, ring. Da, 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 da. And she did it for a good 15, 20 seconds following her oh. around and and bragging that they ended up winning. Everyone's talked about it. Everyone's got an opinion on it. K Dot, what is yours? I will give you mine after. Your time is up. My time is now. You can't see me. I'm sorry. <laughs> shout out John Cena, of course. Shout yeah. out John Cena. Also, shout out Vince McMahon for making them billions on the sale of fucking WWE. Um, fucking nuts. Right. All right. Um, look, 
I was watching other things when that fucking game was on, but Mm -hmm. I was on Twitter and I was seeing everything that was happening as it was kind of going on because everything was just exploding as it goes. Um, I was talking about the other podcasts I recorded, uh, all sorts of sports. So we were there and um, one of our one of my co-hosts went on a like 15, 20 minute rant about Caitlin. Uh, What's her name? Caitlin Clark. Yes. Um, About how amazing she is, how pure a shooter she is, how this, that and the other. But the main thing and the mainstay that I kept hearing about it from him and everyone else was she's got that attitude. She's got that moxie, right? Mm -hmm. To the point at which if you were to right now go after you finish this episode of Dish Divided, go find all sorts of sports, the other podcasts I do. I just recreated a new intro video. The intro video for the show includes Caitlin Clark prior to the championship game, but based on the fact of what it is that my boy, my co-host Ryan told me. And when I was looking up what clip to cut from Caitlin Clark, you know what I stumbled upon? An ESPN special video about all the different times, about Caitlin Clark's clapbacks, about all the different times that she does these things where it riles up the opponents, where it gets the other players and their teammates all fucking on. And ever she's been, like you said, the darling of this fucking tournament as far as, like, she doesn't give a shit. She's the one talking to people, hey, you're up 15, how about you, sh- or oh, we're up, f- we're, you're down 15 You're, you're down 15, shut up. To shut Haley up. Van Lith, who also had the uh, exchange against, I think it was Texas, something like, something like that, I can't remember who it was, but, you know, where she's, that whole thing, there was a chain reaction of events that sort of created this whole situation. But yeah, talking trash to her. Yeah. So there, so there's that. Okay. Then you have all of a sudden um, you, you, you then have somebody clapping back at her. Now I give you that anyone that says it was different. You're right. Technically it is a little different. I mean, one thing as far as clapping towards your teammates bench and it gets caught up by cameras is a little different than following someone around for 20 seconds uh, doing the you can't see me in their face, right? Right. But that being said, it's all part of the same fucking thing. And anybody's trying to draw some imaginary line as far as where it is you are or not allowed to fucking trash talk, suck my dick from the back, okay? It's, It's dumb as shit. If you're going to be in that world, then you're in that fucking world. If you don't want me to celebrate, you don't want me to do this or that and the other, then stop me from fucking doing it. Everybody has a different way of going about this game, right? But then on top of that, especially not even stop me, be, stop me if you don't want to see me do it. By God, don't you ever try to say anything out of your mouth if the person I'm doing it to is a trash talker too. It's fucking horseshit. It's a right. double standard and it's nonsense. And then if we want to expand it, just Dave Portnoy, um, fucking Keith Oberman, all these fucking cocksucks that want to go do this shit. I'll tell you right now, the reason you guys love Caitlin Clark is because she didn't remind you of a white basketball player. She reminded you of a black basketball player, but it made it okay. It made it okay for her to have that black basketball player swagger because she was lily white. And it made it kind of cool and awesome for you to fucking share it on, right? And the moment mm-hmm. she got a little fucking taste is the moment you have something today. And that's not anything against Caitlin Clark. Do your thing. Do your fucking thing. Actually, yeah. th- when you hear her afterwards saying, I don't understand why she caught all that flack. Um, end of the discussion. I end of the fucking agree. discussion. She handled it really well. Yes. Yeah, the whole time. Like it, that's and that's we are on the same page. A hundred percent on the same page. First things first. If you are playing a sport, trash talk is allowed. Uh, next thing. If you trash talk you are going to get some back. And let's go ahead and put ourselves in the shoes of Angel Reese for a moment. And if you, if people have been following her story, well, then this is the least she could have done, just to be clear. So here's the deal. And I'll begin with, so I, I just looked it up. Um, Haley Van Leith did have an exchange with someone from the Texas women's basketball team in the handshake line. Yep. Pushed her away. She was talking shit that whole time. Caitlin Clark talks shit to Haley Van Leet. They're actually friends, stuff like that. Does the you can't see me to her um, in the quarters. And then we get to the final and Angel Reese does it. So we're just coming back to the, you know, origins of this and also points at her ring. And I thought it was perfect. I thought it was absolutely perfect. Angel Reese with LSU has consistently been criticized for the way that she handles herself has consistently been told to act a certain way, 
And she has, and to her credit, maintained I'm unapologetically myself. 100%. That's simple. And my coach allows me to be that everyone gives flack to. And my teammates allow me to be. And I'm with a bunch of ballers. We are who we are. And I love it. They became the villain because they were playing Iowa. So once it became a situation where it went, okay, everyone loves Caitlin Clark. She's trash talking. They're celebrating her for all the things I do. I, Angel Reese, do. Well, yeah, I got a little something for her. And it's actually not to her. It's to everybody. 100%. That I am doing the exact same thing, but I know I'm going viral for this because you've never liked me doing it, but you've loved her doing it. So it was very much a, I don't blame her for being upset. I don't blame her for being angry. And I don't even know that she was those things. I know I would be. Okay. But she played great in the final. Her teammates played great in the final. 102 points. You kidding me? She had every right to do all those things. It's in the realm of sports, people. Grow up. It happens. If you think about the NFL and all the trash talk, and now you call it the no fun league. Why? Taunting. You get upset when taunting calls are called, right? Mm -hmm. You want them to be able to. Now, this is a problem. Right. This was perfect for women's basketball, by the way. Everyone's talking about it. Yes. It's through the roof. Portnoy, terrible take, but sparked a conversation at the same time because everyone started going after him too. It worked well. And I'm glad in that respect it happened. It was a trash take. Absolutely trash take. And it was definitely, definitely (laughs) racist. It was definitely racist because there's no other way. There's no way it's not. Like, I'm not. No way, it's not. I'm not even. Here's my thing. I'm, I'm not, not praising even, him. Just to be clear, I want to be abundantly clear. Well, about praising him. I'm just recognizing what happened. I'll keep it a buck. I'll keep it a hundred bucks. Go ahead. The, last week, I said that I want us to be the official barstool fucking sports podcast, DC. That Which means being apologi- uh, unapologetically and, ourselves. It, and I want to work for Portnoy, or at least the fuck is it? I'm not. I'm not <laughs> taking anything away from that, right? But I still say, and I say the same thing to Portnoy face to face. It was that he is so. It's like, I just keep it. I, mean, I said, I keep a buck, right? Keep it a buck. White people don't know how to get out of their own way. They, they, there's a, there's an air of ignorance and it's not, it's not always will for ignorance. It's not always even it's, it's just, they, they don't know how to get out of their fucking own ways most of the time. And the, 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 the I can understand his logic behind what it is he's doing or what it is he's saying or how he said that he's always had this energy, this, that, and the other, right? But you don't understand how it is that when you do have the takes that you do have, especially on the platform that you have, how problematic that is overall for a certain segment of the population and how it plays into all these other really, really seriously negative things, which also, if we're going to keep it a buck as far as everybody, Dr. Joe Biden. Oh, um, my God. That, that maybe was the worst of it all. It's the it's yeah, and that's the thing is like she didn't she didn't outright come out and say something like Portnoy did or that Oberman did right, but we're talking about from a double standard viewpoint. We're talking about when is the last time you've heard someone say that they I want to bring the losers there to the White House there with she what? Said that. And then they tried to backtrack and say, oh well, she meant it from a women's back. Did UConn get an invitation last year? Right. So it's bullshit. What you're doing is you felt a certain way about what it is that you saw was happening in the media mm-hmm. and that you wanted to be your fucking Dr. Joe Biden white knight bullshit and yep. be there to try to be there for Iowa. And look, look, Caitlin, give you all the credit in the world. When you were on ESPN, and you said, uh, I, from what I remember, I don't think the loser goes. That's supposed to be there for LSU. Perfectly fucking handled. Right. Once again, Joe Biden did not say anything like on a surface level. She invited someone to come to the White House to it celebrate. Was Sounds amazing, right? Death. Yeah. But it oh my is, goodness. That's there are so many people that do not know when to shut the fuck up. Can, can I also so um I retweeted this today because I was like, wait, this was handled perfectly. And I don't here's the thing, I'm still learning about women's college basketball. I'm gonna butcher some pronunciations here. Um but coach Lisa Bluter. Okay. Bluter mm-hmm. Bluter. I think it's Bluter, B L U D E R. I gratefully acknowledge the first lady sentiments, but a day at the White House should belong solely to the champion LSU and Coach Mulkey. We would welcome the first lady and president to come to Iowa's house, 
Carver Hawkeye Arena anytime. Perfectly handled. Wonderful. Caitlin Clark, perfectly handled. Wonderful. There was Dr. another person Jill... that handled it. Go ahead. Go ahead. There's one other person that handled it amazingly. Who would that be? Andrew fucking Reese. I ain't I only did you, did you hear the <laughs> oh, and did you hear her on I Am Athlete? Which was yeah. also a great interview. Dude, here's the thing. Like, dude, I'm gonna be once again keeping it a buck. I am not a huge fan of trash talkers in sports. Just never have been. Oh, I love it's it. It's not it's I not my mode of going it. it. Yeah. But I do also know that in anything, I, I love I love stories. I love entertainment. And regardless, you need a villain sometimes. You need somebody that's gonna be the person that just says anything they need to say. It, you you need your uh Pat Beverly's and Draymond Greens. And- I, I have a I have a question for you though. Like, does does the first lady invite Iowa if Angel Reese does not do what she did at the end of the game? No, you can't see me in the ring. Exactly. No. So it is it was literally like a. and if Caitlin Clark did it to Angel Reese. Is LSU getting invited? No, no. So that's the whole thing. The whole thing was to me, it screamed. First lady really wanted Caitlin Clark there. I don't even think she cared about the other Iowa guys. I think she was literally like, I love this story. I really want to meet this girl. Why don't I just invite both teams under the guise of sportsmanship? Because I really went there to root for Iowa. There I really wanted nothing. Iowa to win. Let's keep it a buck. I was there to watch Iowa win. That's what that told me. And that's why I was so stunned by it. I was like, you just said it out loud. There is nothing America loves more than white people excelling at things that black people usually excel at (laughs) to be a personality in that world right if you are the white rapper that crosses over and becomes cool you got it made for a bit all right until there's enough until you do enough stupid shit that there's some (laughs) you get some black but if you except if you're look at the nfl christian mccaffrey on mr untouchable mr Mm -hmm. untouchable yeah i'd say travis kelsey (laughs) <laughs> you know, let me talk about this guy it's dudes that joe burrow when exactly. they talk about oh, joe burrow they talk about that's joe that's true but what is it with joe burrow joe burrow's the same dude that Other knows LSU when he's in the lsu do it because it, it's that bayou feel right and that's the thing right. them white them white cats down in the bayou act a certain way they got swag and when we talk mm-hmm. about swag that is they've been rough, around enough black athletes that some of that shit has now crossed over and they're cool rubs off on you yeah and that's where it comes down to like they love that shit i mean everybody here you, there's there's one if you're the white athlete that can get past the he's a scrappy hard worker lunch pal <laughs> that when you can transcend that right to you're just fucking cool yeah because most of these dudes ain't that cool but when you're just fucking cool the world loves you. Julian Edelman, he got past it, past his own point. It's like you reach a certain level, and it's like that they're always looking for it because they always know the coolest guys are usually fucking black and women. Oh, man. Usually fucking black. That, that's actually a really, really good point. But I, I will give it to I will give it to the first lady. She managed to unite both sides when she did that because everyone was arguing, is it like did Angel Reese cross the line? Anything, whatever. The moment she invited Iowa. Everyone turned around and was like, wait a minute, fuck that. <laughs> like everyone was just like on the same page. Quite clearly, it is for the winners only. That's how it's always been. And everybody immediately turned their knives over to the White House. Can I, I say mean, you couldn't make this up. Like it is genuinely one of the funniest situations I've ever seen. Go ahead. Just like a spineless liberal fucking white Democrat. <laughs> like, it's just. It, it, this was the first time I felt that. That's what I'm saying. That's what it is. It's I literally. We are going. Like, we are. Lips. That's what I'm saying. It's the, these motherfuckers. Time. Same here. <laughs> Same here. All my friends, my girlfriend, everybody. We're all the liberal white Democrats. I'm surrounded by them. But there's. But that was all, the one and only time I was like, that fucking. Lip. That's <laughs> what it is. Fucking spineless and still problematic. And don't even realize that they're problematic. It's the actions speak louder than the nonsense shit that you say. That the doesn't funniest even thing mean is, is this legitimately has political ramifications. Because it might. I mean, certain people may legitimately be like, I doubt it. I, we I doubt supposed it. to get in the grand scheme of things. It's still take, fucking it women's doesn't basketball. Take much for the average person to swing their vote. I'm telling like, you, over I got, small things. I wish that I cared more 
if I'm being completely honest about women's college basketball. I used to. Gino uh-huh. Oriyama and UConn and Diane Taurasi oh, stuff. Dynasty. I watched it all the time. Dynasty. Um, it was just awesome to see. But no, I am not as plugged in as maybe I even should be. But it's um, like like you said, it's good that it's in the conversation, good or bad, as far as the right. way the conversation itself is going. It's keeping people talking about women's college basketball. You know, there's this um, there's this Twitter follow, the Exploding Heads. I don't know if you've seen them. It's a couple guys from Britain, um, and they end up doing a bunch of uh, a bunch of parodies. Uh, one yeah. of which is this guy has a talk radio show, and he has on Colin from Portsmouth. Uh, And Colin from Portsmouth is a very angry white male. Okay. Uh, Just today, for example, they dropped uh, they dropped one where he was upset that Donald Trump got arrested because if he gets arrested, then the rest of us can get arrested. There are certain stupid people out there. Okay, and it is satire. But there are a lot of people like Colin from Portsmouth. Okay, on both sides, to be clear. So when I say this could have potential political ramifications, some people are literally going to remember this and be like, no, that's it. It, it literally is that simple for some people. If if All it I'm is, saying. you should lose your right to vote. I agree <laughs> with that, just to be clear. But I'm telling you, people have that right, and they vote. These people have voted for stuff for stranger reasons. We got to get off this before I say some shit that I can't. Yep. <laughs> and we're moving on to the comment mailbag. We got three comments this week uh, from two OGs. Shout out Blood Clot and Vindo. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that segment. We both we both really enjoyed it. Um, Let's start with Blood Clot, who's got two. Okay. Blood Clot. Charles Baklava, the billionaire vampire from Transylvania, putting in a bid for the commanders. Charles Baklava, he wants to. <laughs> you did say Charles Baklava last week. Shout out Blood Clot for that comment. Uh, and we got one more from him, of course. Or, or... no, him, hey, it's Mike. Um, Snyder is such a curse to himself that if he signed Lamar to DC as a last FU, you can guarantee Lamar would be in the Hall of Fame as a commander. <laughs> Whatever Snyder wants to happen, the opposite will would be the result. And then he will try to reap all the credit for that signing, even though that's not what he intended. And you know what? He got two likes on that one. I tell you what, just knowing right. Snyder's luck, I think he's right. <laughs> he's 100% right. And he's right that's why that. it needs to happen. Yep. Um, and then we move over to Vindo. So thank you, Blood Cloud, for the two comments there. Um, I'm interested in when the team sells, if the new stadium will be in Northern Virginia or tear down FedEx Field and building it there while we play somewhere else temporarily. I'm thinking it's going to be indoors and hope it will be up by 2030. Also, I have a question about the commander's name. Do you think there is a possibility that the new owner would change the name? Shout out, Vindo. Appreciate the comment there. Okay, now let's start with you. Um. I was going to say absolutely not because of how much money it takes to do a rebranding, especially after you just drop how many billion dollars to buy a fucking franchise. But Magic Johnson also said something about changing the uniforms and designing uniforms of shit. Um, If they're going to do an entire uniform design, if they are thinking about throwing around new colors, things like that, then I think it opens up the door a bit more. I will say this. um, Save for one or two names that we already seen like, I have a lot of other teams or other franchises that have those names. I'm completely solidified and okay with the fucking commander's name. And that is not in my top 20 list of priorities for this sale. Mm-hmm. I, I get people being upset about it, but I also think that it's something that you have to just let grow on you. The only yes. reason the Redskins named work was because of the history with it. If anyone had said, hey, let's name the team the Redskins a year ago out of nowhere, you would have said, shut the fuck up. That's a stupid fucking name, Um, as is most team names that you're not used to. But I'll tell you right now, I still talk to people all the time. They still want to call them the fucking Washington football team, not from a political statement. They're just not used to something different. And they were the same ones that said how stupid or terrible it was. We didn't have a team name. Yeah, I was going to say, just to echo your sentiment. Yeah, I think you just need to get used to the name. It's going to yes. take a little bit of time, but you by year four, if we just see the commanders, you're going to be quite used to it, and you probably will end up liking it, even if you don't want to. Uh, I think it's yep. just one of those things. Uh, do I think it's a possibility? Yes, I do think it's a possibility. Do I think it'll happen? No, I don't think so. Uh, now, if Bezos buys it, and you talk about a lot of money, and that's not an object... It might. Well, <laughs> it Washington, might Washington Prime is a legit name. It, it is pretty dope. Um, so I could see Cross that brain. being a thing. Uh, but it is a possibility. I don't think it's going to happen. 
I also think don't rule out the old RFK site. Uh, as a possibility for the new stadium as well. It'd be metro accessible. And by that, I mean not walking a mile uphill. I mean, you'd be there um, and it's in the city, which I know Mayor Bowser has been angling for for a good amount of time, just waiting for the ownership change. And it looks like that is going to be happening either this month or in a few months. As we mentioned earlier, chronologically, we've got Rogers, then the sale, then Lamar getting solved. So that is a matter of months. Um that was the common mailbag. This was District Divided, a DC sports podcast. Thank you guys so much for listening to today's episode. If you enjoyed the episode, please like it. Please share the video with others. Please comment, and we will read it out with the comment mailbag. And, of course, subscribe to the channel, please, uh, and click the notification bell so that you can be up to date whenever new episodes drop. I'm Amit. That's KDOT. After the pod begins right now. All right. Uh so last week I teased the story about the police yes, helicopter. Go ahead. Um, and as you said, RFK it reminded me that I'm going to get back into this. So <laughs> it's uh, it's spring break 2007. Um, okay. Or no, it's no fuck that. It's not spring break. It's March 2007. I don't even remember what the fuck the spring break was, but it was a weekend. I think you could have um, gotten away with it. Go ahead. For some reason, I uh, I'm not usually in my I get. Get through some stuff. I didn't have my own car. My mom was going to work, going to work on a uh, Friday night or something, and I decided that I was going to follow her in so I could then take her car and go do something. My uh, buddy Theo um, used to throw these parties that they called the dock parties on the Anacostia River, right next to the RFK site. So, like, if you go to RFK, they have the big parking lot, and then there's the Anacostia River that goes, and there's a uh, wooden bridge that takes you over to a little island that's right there on the Anacostia. Uh, Theo had been known to throw these epic dock parties in which everybody would get fucking trashed, wasted. It was always a great fucking time. We were going to throw a dock party the following week. Um, we had already gone to Total Wine in Northern Virginia, packed up a bunch of fucking booze, all kinds of stuff. We were ready to fucking go. Um, I'm a senior in high school, also remind you. Yeah. <laughs> <This is laughs> so um, the week before, I get a phone call from Theo saying, hey, look, we want to go over to the dock. We're going to make some burgers and stuff like that. Why don't you just come on over? I uh, came over to Northeast. So I said, all right, cool. So I went, um, went with my mom, followed her to work, got in the car, and I started heading across town. My mom works in Townleytown, and I got to drive all the way over to fucking Northeast. That so is like, a drive. It's a trek. So yeah. go down what uh, Missouri, military, military, North mm-hmm. Cap, North Cap, down Florida Avenue. Okay. As I'm driving down Florida Avenue, I get to Dave Thomas Circle. The Dave Thomas Circle back then in 07 looks different than Dave Thomas Circle looks right now. When everybody knows New York Avenue, Florida Avenue, if you're from the area, the worst goddamn intersection may be in town. As I'm sitting in the car at a traffic light, there are two gentlemen that pull up next to me in a two-door, looks like a Buick or something, and they're motioning to me that I should roll my window down. <clears throat> now, I'm on the other side of town. Um, I, I'm... Fr- I know what it means when my wants you to roll down your fucking window and you're it's not usually something good. So I crack it just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Just so I can make out what the fuck it is he's saying. He said, No, 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 man. put it put it down even further, put it down further. I'm like, uh, all right. So put it down further. And the guy looks to me and he says, Me and my man here, we having an argument. Do you believe in God? Now, when this motherfucker says this shit, I'm thinking I'm about to get shot and fucked. Yeah, I was going to say, you better be careful with that answer. Yeah. <laughs> I'm fucking terrified. Before I get an opportunity to do it, the light turns green and I fucking take off. I'm yeah, driving yeah, my mom's. I was going to say that. I'm driving my mom's wow. Volvo Ooh. station wagon. I fucking haul ass to another traffic light where they decide to pull up next to me again. <laughs> he said, I don't know, man. What, what the fuck was that about? I'm like, nothing. What, what y'all need? <laughs> He then turns to me, and as much as I, he had his hand down, because it's the guy in the passenger seat, mm-hmm. he had his hand down, so I thought he might be pulling something out of the other uh, thing. I'm ready to either take off or do whatever, and I ain't going to run right. yet. Do you believe in gay marriage? I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> so they proceeded to tell me this, and I'm, they're having a full-fledged debate about whether or not gay marriage is okay. <laughs> I tell them that I think gay marriage should be legal, and the dude that asked me, he's like, I told you, man, you're fucking ignorant. The gays should be allowed to the get gays married. I'm be like, God damn, they're having like a full-blown social con- like they're having a real conversation. Red light cool. to red light. Yeah. Red light to red light. So it's all good. They thank me for my input. We actually keep talking a little bit as we go on the rights. They they make a right. I'm still going down towards Benning Road.
Mm-hmm. But you got his number at this point. No, I'm just no, 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 that. So um, I get down to RFK and I'm parked right there on the, it's either 40 some 30 some street right outside the RFK lot because I'm on the phone with Theo and a couple of the other guys. So Theo's with okay. my friend James, he's with Devin, and he's with Ted. So the guys, they pull up in uh, Devin's busted up fucking bright red Ford Taurus station wagon. I hop in and we decide that, all right, well, the dock, we got to go through the parking lot. So we look, there's security driving through the parking lot. looks like they're closing all the gates. The parking lot. It's okay. starting to get dark out. Yeah. We see an open gate. So we say, fuck it and drive through. Parking lot of RFK is fucking massive, right? So we drive around, we go and there's, we get to the, I've never been to the dock before. I've heard about these parties, but I've never been. Okay. We get to the little area, the little bit of grass next to the parking lot that usually they say this is where we go to enter. And there's a chain link fence there. Now, I don't know if that's normal or not, but the way the guys are reacting, they're saying, oh, well, this isn't supposed to be here. Yeah, nah, we'll move it. No worries, because it's one of those temporary chain link fence. So it's uh-huh. in the cinder blocks, move it, pull the car in, put the chain link fence back, and then we're we're going off to grow. So we grab our Boca burgers and. Um, we got all got water bottles full of vodka, all that kind of shit. And we start making our walk down over the bridge. Now we walk. It's a bridge. When you get to the center of the bridge, it's a nice big square. They decide we're not going to do this because we're going to have a fire. Let's go all the way back to the island because there's a concrete platform. We're going to cook. So we go. Keep going. Grilling out, drinking, just having a good old time. You know, you and your boys, high school. It's a good night. As yeah. a matter of fact, the reason I thought about any of this is Georgetown was actually playing in March Madness, and they were going on a bit of a run that year, if I'm not mistaken, where something was happening. Maybe it was they the, went to the final four in 06, 07. Yeah. Yeah. So they were going on a run. So it was like the whole city was electric. It was a good night. Mm-hmm. So we're there. Um, it's a normal night. It, weather's pretty good. And I noticed that, like, as always, you're over in Northeast. The helicopters, they normally fly over. You're in D.C., right? Right. So you see a helicopter, like the medical helicopters, military helicopters, everybody's flying over doing their whole thing. And, um, we got the fire going for the little fire pit. We got the burgers and stuff going. And we see one helicopter kind of hovers above us. Okay. It's just kind of staying there. It's really, really high, though. It's really, really high. So we're just not really paying that much attention to it. Helicopter kind of takes off, but then it does a loop. It comes back to stand right over us again. So I'm like, huh, what the fuck is going on with that? All of a sudden, the helicopter does something that I've seen in fucking movies. It dives and the spotlight comes on <laughs> immediately. Okay. Spotlight comes on and illuminates all of this. As my friend Theo goes to tell, proceed to tell us, don't run. All the rest of us are already 30, 40 feet <laughs> 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 down this fucking walkway. Now we are running. And the helicopter is at that point where if it wasn't for the spotlight, if we were to turn around, we've been able to see everyone that was in the fucking helicopter. It was that goddamn long. that close. Wow, that close. And as long as I live, I will never forget the feeling of running across the Anacostia River, our feet hitting the wood of the planks on the bridge mm-hmm. while a spotlight is on you, off you, <laughs> on you, off you, on you, off you. Fucking terrifying. Now, I had a black T-shirt. Like you're with- in an action movie. It's fucking nuts. So yeah. I had a black T-shirt with a beige shirt over and over top. If you want to know what my style was like up until this day, take a look at some old episodes of Keenan and Cal. I'm a fat guy. Oh, with, great, great show. It's a great show. But I'm a fat guy with man tits. So I used to wear over shirts to cover the tits. You know what I mean? So you do what you think. Now, because I'm wearing this beige shirt, I'm thinking I'm pretty much highly illuminated by the goddamn light. So I'm going to mm-hmm. take this bitch off. So I take it off, all of us, and we dive into the woods just past the bridge. As we dive into the woods... We can still hear the helicopter up ahead. It's clear that the spotlight's not on us anymore, so they can't find us exactly. Mm-hmm. But they're kind of searching. And we hear the helicopter, hear the helicopter. Everybody's just sort of in the bushes. We're waiting. We're waiting. We're waiting. Helicopter seems like it's going away just a bit, so we say, all right, fuck it, let's get the fuck out of here. So continue to walk down the path towards the car. As we're walking, it is completely dark out now. You can see across the parking lot, there are these little red and blue lights. It's kind of lit up all over Benning Road and stuff. Um, Once again, the parking lot is shut down, so nobody can get into the parking lot. We didn't know this at that point. How the fuck are we going to get out? But we'll figure it out. We get in the car. Well, some of the guys get into the car. It's my job to go and move the chain link fence out of the way. Me and Ted. It's me and Ted. We go. We take the chain link fence. We go out. And as I'm seeing the blue and red lights, I see these shadowy figures getting larger 
and they're yeah. yelling something out, but I can't make it out. What? What? Get the fuck on the ground, motherfucker! <laughs> what? <laughs> they're Metropolitan Police Department, guns drawn, <laughs> running around, the park, running across the parking lot, <laughs> counting our fucking faces, <laughs> and proceed to get on the ground. Uh, the cop actually presses his fucking gun against the back of my goddamn neck as I'm sitting on the as I'm on the goddamn ground. So, uh, <laughs> Devin, or it was me and Devin. Ted was in the car. Mm-hmm. Ted gets out of the car. Or he got a solid gunpoint on the fucking ground, and there are just more cops. There's an ambulance. There's a fire truck. The entire goddamn day, all of Northeast Police Department and medical services are over there at RFK right now with us. And we look around and we don't see our friend James. We don't really say anything. We can't find James. <laughs> so the cops are there. They are irate with us. One of the cops is really upset with me. If you hear me say get on the fucking ground, you get on the fucking ground. I can make shut the fuck up. You get on the goddamn ground. I tell you to get on the motherfucking ground. I almost shot your dumb ass. Okay. All right, sir. Again, I'm sorry. <laughs> it is what it is. Finally, the fire truck, they open up one of the gates. Fire truck comes rolling in. They bring a bunch of cop cars, start coming in. There's like whatever the lieutenant, the supervisor is there. Um, they're discussing what to do with this. Now, the people that were most upset was the uh, firefighters who had all their equipment. And because we had lit a fire, they had to then walk all the way across down with all their equipment on to make sure the fire was out. They were not happy with us at all. <laughs> they were very upset with us. So they go and they start walking. Yeah. And as they start walking towards the room, uh, towards the woods, James just kind of pops up out of there. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? What? Y'all got anybody else in the fucking wood? What the fuck you guys got? got? We're, thing is, James walks out at a point that we got everything kind of calm. All right. Okay. We're talking with the cops. The cops have given us all nicknames. Theo is Harry. Uh, Theo is Harry Potter. No, no. Ted is Harry Potter because <laughs> he has glasses <laughs> and he's white. Um, they look at me, and American Idol was popular at that point. They called me Ruben Stuttered because I was a <laughs> rotund black guy. <laughs> and they looked at Theo, and they were like, we know he's been to jail before because of Theo's vibe. James comes out, and uh, he then proceeds to tell the cops, do you guys get paid enough to be harassing kids like this? And that sets everything back. And the, cops that we're making, the cops that we're having some fun with, they say, oh, shit. And there's a short, black, muscular cop, bald head guy, couldn't been taller than five foot two. He goes off, grabs Jane by the scruff of his fucking neck, is screaming, spitting in his face, just fucking going off. Cop looks at me, he's like, that stupid motherfucker shouldn't have said that shit, man. Y'all might have gone away. <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant comes over, he's like, just to teach these fuckers a lesson, bring the paddy wagon, man. Fuck it. Just bring the wagon. They're going to have to sit in jail over the fucking weekend ain't nobody gonna get him out until monday because no none of the courts gonna listen to him but they they should sit they should sit the fucking weekend in jail it is what it is the only thing on my mind is i am two weeks away from being able to buy a car my i've been saving up money <laughs> my parents are gonna match what it is i'm saving and a jeep cherokee is in my sights i'm like if i go to jail it's probably not gonna fucking happen right <laughs> uh long story short we we did a whole bunch of shit um come to find out james's mom was actually a producer on America's Most Wanted, the TV show with John Walsh. And that comes up as a topic of conversation. James is able to finesse to get some of them backstage passes to the show. Oh, my God. <laughs> There's a shooting that happens at the Denny's, I think, on Bladensburg Road. Okay. And the cops say, fuck it, let these dumbasses go. And we leave. <laughs> now, so that was the police helicopter story. Now, that, that night, it wasn't over. Oh, um, my God. How did you? I, right. I can't say where I I went back to my mom's uh, place, uh, to her to her place of work. She's a nanny, okay. and I'm not telling her anything. I'm shook still from the events that have happened that night. Right. But I still have made it in time for her to get off of work, and we leave. And it's me, her, and my sister, and we drive to a giant. I'm not going to say the giant's location, but we go to a giant. It's a 24-hour giant. Uh, we get there at the parking lot. It's got to be like 12, 30, 1 o'clock in the morning. My mom's got to go in and grab some stuff. I tell her I don't want to go. I'm just going to stay here in the car because I'm convinced after talking to the two gentlemen, I thought we're going to shoot me on the way. The cops almost shooting me. The police helicopter. I'm this. It's not a good night. Yeah, you need some space. Just need to chill. So I'm sitting in the car. My mom and my sister, they go inside the uh, place and I start hearing some yelling like a fight or something happening. Yeah. 
So I kind of peek out. I look, and there's a bunch of teenagers, like, brawling near the car. I just kind of say, fuck it, not paying attention to this shit. I just need to go home. All of a sudden, I feel the car shake back and forth. They're now fighting on the front wheel well area of the fucking Volvo. So I get out of the car to try to tell these guys, hey, before I can get two words out, one of the motherfuckers pulls out a knife. <laughs> Stares at me. What you going to do, you fat motherfucker? Oh, shit. What'd you like, do? This is the end of me. <laughs> it was supposed to be the last thing. It's going to be. This I have thing. poked the bear so goddamn much that I'm going to die at the hands of some 13 year old middle schooler. <laughs> that just happens to have a fucking because all those kids I could have taken. <coughs> But I knew that luck was not on my side. And if it wasn't for a nice gentleman, older black guy who was going to his car, kind of scared them all off. I didn't say a word to anybody. I just got in the car, closed the door and sat quietly. My mom came. She looked at me. You okay? Yep, I'm fine. Just go home. And I didn't (laughs) sleep the rest of the night. I was convinced I was going to have a heart attack or a stroke or something that night. I just Yeah, holy smokes. But that is one of the top three worst nights of my life. How do you end it on top three worst? I've been divorced. I've almost okay, I've, well. I've been divorced. I've stuck a gun in my mouth once. Like there are some nights, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, this was District Divided, DC Sports Podcast. <laughs> Love it. That's that's Kate on. Um, I was gonna keep it a buck with you guys. So keep and it you did, and you did. What a story. Well, I hey, I appreciate the story. That was that was electric from start to finish. I mean. I thought your night was definitely over. It was like, okay, fine. This ends with them getting the backstage passes and they're at the Denny's of Bladensburg Road. And like, that's that. No, sir. There's more. Yep. So th- for for like for what was hilarious though, <laughs> following that, we had a Facebook event uh-huh. for the doc party. Okay. I was supposed to run security. We were going to charge people like $3 a red solo cup and that was going to be your ticket of entry. Hmm. Oh, I like that. We, the cop, we did. It did come out, and the cops knew that that's what we were doing. And they, James, uh, Theo, had that talked was to, the okay. Got it. The cops told Wonder, us yeah. that if anyone showed up to the dock, they had all of our information. They were going to fuck us up personally. <laughs> <laughs> so, trying to convince three hundred to four hundred local high school not to go, yeah, not. <laughs> to come <laughs> to the dock party when we were always kind of known as pranksters and bullshit or whatever was right. extremely hard and it theo was a year canceled. older yeah yeah <laughs> theo was a year older. he went to nova new, uh, nova community yeah, college yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. so we had like older kids all kind of, it was a show but we did have enough booze for the party that we drank every day for like months we were straight that's there how was you guys no became alcoholics right dot- party yes <laughs> i didn't i don't well yeah full-blown alcoholism probably hits around age 20 for me yeah okay <laughs> well so. i i don't think there's anything i could say that could come anywhere close to what you just provided us just now yeah we used to have to tell the story like every fucking get together and then it got to a point where i was sick and tired of telling the story theo was sick and tired of telling the story james was sick and tired of telling the story and some of our closest friends like brendan was sick and tired of hearing the story so Sorry. I have not unwrapped that story in it's got to be almost a decade. Well, now. if you ever want to just, you know, <laughs> make Brendan suffer, just play this on repeat for him. <laughs> Might be able to do that. Yeah. Now that it's on the Internet. Um, holy cow. <laughs> what a story. I think about one other thing. One last part. Uh, I didn't tell my parents what happened, but. Like two or three weeks later, my dad and me were driving out to Virginia to go take a look at one of the Jeeps. We decided we don't want that one. And okay. we're in traffic. We're at the mixing bowl at 495. So it's just taking forever. And I see a helicopter kind of pass above us. And I was like, I'm going to tell my dad what happened. And he laughed at me the rest of the car ride. <laughs> was that the reaction you were expecting? No. <laughs> I didn't know what. My dad can be pretty cool. But uh, yeah. no, he just made fun of me for years after that. Oh, I bet. Yeah, that's my dad. All right, Shout yeah, out your dad. <laughs> all right, yeah, I, think, awesome. I think we're done. I guess I don't think there's any way, way we could be like, all right, now let's talk about this. So <laughs> this was the show, guys. I hope you guys really enjoyed K-Dot's story.
I did. It was awesome. And if you want to drop in the comments your craziest stories, top three, please do. just like he did, please do, because we could read those <laughs> as well and react. <laughs> Until next week, take it easy, guys. Bye, guys. In DC, we're just hoping that you listen.